There are some very interesting developments right now in China. We also have to look at Russia and of course so many other things. I want to show you what's happening within China right now as it relates to the chip war that's taking place between the US and China. And you look at the impact that this has on a global scale. No matter where you are, you're going to see that. The second thing, of course, what's happening with Russia's crude right now because of everything with Ukraine and of course the connection between Europe. This has been some strained relations to say the least and then we'll talk about inflation we'll talk about the economy and so much more let's begin I've been talking about this frequently over the last little while because it is so important. The current administration wants to slow China's progress in advanced computing and artificial intelligence with the aim of guaranteeing that the US military retains its technological edge. To do so, it is preventing China from accessing the chips that advanced AI requires, which are mostly designed in the US and manufactured in Taiwan. China will find it di very difficult to evade these rules and its computing capabilities will degrade relative to the US capabilities as a result. So obviously China has an incentive here to try and get its edge. So this is a battle in between the two and Taiwan right now is sitting in the middle. And that's very important because we are seeing a lot of talk about what's happening with Taiwan. Every day you're seeing news articles popping up saying China is going to completely take Taiwan Taiwan is practicing drills in case of an invasion. The US is pumping out all their stuff, propaganda in the media and all the statements that they've been making. So we know that things are real hot and heavy. Let's break it down a little bit further right here. This article right here breaks down what you are seeing right now at this time in terms of restrictions. I wanted to show that to you. So one month ago, there were, I'd say, two main categories of restrictions that applied to China. First was for equipment at the most cutting edge. So UV lithography machines being the best example of this that were impossible to transfer to China. And this really only referred to a small set of tools that only restricted China's ability to move to the most advanced process nodes in producing logic chips and certain types of memory chips as well. But it was the most cutting edge set of machinery. That was the first set of restrictions. And then the second, there were restrictions on specific Chinese firms that were restricted either from accessing US technology or also in some cases accessing production capacity in Taiwan at TSMC that used US technology. And so Huawei, the best example of this, but there were also a bunch of Chinese firms that were assessed to have links to the Chinese military. And so there were two sets of restrictions that were in place. So that was a lot of talk, but essentially what we have here are these different restrictions that are going in trying to prevent China from getting this edge. The US is using every power imaginable that it has. And obviously we know why, because they see China as a threat. China sees the US as a threat, of course, and they are bumping heads. So right now they're doing this. We had the tariff war before, remember that? All kinds of goods had these additional taxes essentially on top of them. So somebody wanted to import and now it became much more expensive. In some cases you'd find 25% a tax out of nowhere of 25% would give that disincentive to make that business happen, but that created a scramble and some issues. So some of that has been rolled back, but at this time right now, we just see more and more tensions on top of each other. And it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Then we have this, PBOC adjusts cross-border borrowing rules to allow more inflows. So this happens to be something that for some people would come as a surprise, but if you see what's happening with China's central bank, the PBOC, that they have been kind of going in this direction. China's central bank adjusted rules to allow companies to borrow more from overseas, enabling more foreign capital inflows at a time when their currency is plunging to fresh 2008 lows against the dollar. It's not just their currency, of course, all currencies seemingly going against the dollar and losing out, but this is important because we see so much money that had been flowing in from 2020. They're trying to stimulate in any possible way they can. That's what this is all about. It's about the stimulus. They're using it as stimulus and maybe they're willing to allow their currency to weaken. We'll see what happens so far. That's kind of been the case. Then we have what's going on 
with Russia. I wanted to show you a few charts right here. Russia's lifelines, four-week average crude shipments from Russia by destination. Comparing this right now, you're looking at it over the basically this year, China, India, Turkey, and then it says unknown. And you could see that, you know, there are these countries like India that have significantly increased, increased their purchases of crude oil. They've really come in at a time in which Russia has needed it. Russia's crude shipments to Europe, Northern Europe, Mediterranean, Black Sea, these have all declined over this year. And that just gives us a little bit of an idea of what's happening right now, where some countries have been dropping off, but others have been picking it up. You look at this, Russia's North European customers, and that has come off as well. This is important. You know, you can break it down if you want the countries. All I'm trying to show you here is that uh, things have really changed. And Russia, really on the outside, at least from what we could see economically, hasn't been hurt as bad as they had hoped with sanction after sanction and restriction, all these different things, they seem to be having buyers for their commodities or a heavy commodity based country. And they don't seem to be affect, affected by uh, what measures have been put into place at this time. Russia's Asian customers four week average, you're just looking at that China, India, and so on. All I'm trying to show you again is that India has really been consuming more over this period. Now that's important because geopolitical tensions are high between Russia, Ukraine, you look at that and then the impact here, this is of course a proxy war and that spreads out into China. Now China has been a little bit hesitant to say, uh, you know, we're completely in favor of what's happening and they kind of been laying back a bit because they got to deal with their own issues especially Taiwan. And that's really key because you look at the semiconductor factor, that's, that is, you know that that is so important. China's trying to do this on their own, but they are not anywhere near the situation with Taiwan, just like the United States. Yes, they must build their own semiconductors, but they can't not get to the production capacity that Taiwan has because Taiwan's so far ahead. It's going to take so many hundreds of billions of dollars to get it to that level in many years. So we'll see what happens, but we know that China is going to want Taiwan's capacity. So we will see. And that brings me to this. 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, including nearly half of six figure earners. This is a topic I talk about all the time. It's not just the people that are making the median salary in the United States, which right now is $37,000. We're talking about people making six figures, $100,000 plus. They're always paycheck to paycheck. Why? Why does that happen? Because they never live underneath their means. If you've got a business, do you, you know, and suddenly you're making 10 grand a month, you're making 20 grand a month, you're going up and up and up. What do most people do? They start spending to the absolute top. They don't live beneath their means. They don't reinvest in their business to try to build that up. You know, I was going to get into some personal circumstances, but anyway, the point here is you don't want to do that. Do not do so. It's okay to not keep up with the Kardashians. And the reason I mention this is because when we look at the, you know, all these factors today, we need to be prepared and be wise knowing that we could be facing hard times. We want to, you know, be good and, and happy and, and feel abundance and all these things, but we want to make it seem like, you know, we're a little bit cautious. And by spending, spending like crazy all the time, we're going to eventually run up into a brick wall. Ocean shipping costs decline 84% truckers on the verge of losing money. Now, this is huge. If you got time, read this article. It just shows you the difference in what has happened over the last little while. Why is this the case? Well, many are saying that this is because of demand destruction. Price is too high, ordered way too much, and now we have the after effects of that. Daily backup of container ships waiting off the ports of LA and Long Beach. Somebody, one of my subscribers was asking about this. I got you the chart, okay? If you're out there, hit that thumbs up, all right? This is just showing us that this has declined considerably. It was over 100 at one point, 100 ships waiting off the coast, and now it's four. Can you believe it? Huge difference right now. So you know that there just isn't that backlog anymore, finally. And it's important, okay? All of this is very important because it tells us what's happening in the economy, imports and exports and so on. 
The queue of ships waiting to unload at the ports of LA Long Beach went from a peak of 109 in January to four vessels this week. The third point, shipping lines have canceled between 26% and 31% of their sailings across the Pacific over the coming weeks. We're talking about this at a time in which is Q4. This is the time in which you would be talking to your suppliers and you would say, okay, we need to order now to get it here before the holiday season. And it would be so tight, the cost would be up, you'd have trouble, no, we can't produce that amount, it's just too busy right now. And now what's happening? The complete opposite. The complete opposite is unbelievable. Something big is going on. And I'm just bringing in the data. Renters hit a breaking point in sudden reversal for landlords. Affordability pressures and inflation are holding back tenants, forcing landlords to ease off the big increases. So we see the slowdown that has happened in the increases. The prices haven't come down, but the increases have started to slow because People can only handle so much and we are at that and we see it that with the credit card expenditures that are taking place today, very, very big. And I don't think enough people understand this. And then some wild news, Texas natural gas drops towards zero as output swamps pipelines. Now all the reason, you know, the only reason I wanted to mention this was that we are living in a time today where the infrastructure cannot keep up. We need to improve that infrastructure and not spend money on quantitative easing. Okay, This is nonsense what they've been doing. Buying mortgage-backed securities through the biggest housing boom ever in history where the money should be used on infrastructure and improving the daily lives of you and I. But I guess that's too much to ask for, right? Okay, let's take a look at this really briefly. Economically, there's no chance at growth with higher rates. When you have higher rates, you slow down growth. And that's the whole point. They're trying to achieve this. The central banks have made note of this. Companies are all talking inflation and have the negative impact that this has had. So you look at all the conference calls and they measure all these and then they say, you know, what are the CEOs and things talking about? And right now inflation is number one saying, yeah, it's been hitting our business hard. Individuals, you the individual, must be trying to increase your income by getting a raise, taking a second job, working overtime, or anything else that you can figure out. Like you've got to do this right now. You have to take every step you possibly can. Decrease your expenses as much as possible. Eliminate wasteful things. Do you need Disney Plus and you know, whatever all the other streaming services are? Do you really need like seven of them? I know people that have so many of them. Is that necessary? Do you really need two cars? Maybe you can get away with having one car. Maybe you don't even need a car. Some people I know that's just sitting in the driveway half the time. These are things that you could actually look at and say, maybe this just isn't wise to have. And these are the times. We tighten our belts, we try to actually lift up at the same time and we generate a big enough spread in there so that we can have a security blanket. Safety is so important more now than ever before. Did you find this video informative? If you did, you wanna hit that subscribe down below. I'll see you tomorrow.